today we're going to be talking about section 6.3, the second part. So today is going to be mostly dealing with the value that we looked at in vertex form a little bit yesterday, um, which was our a value, which in the equation is y is equal to a times x minus h squared plus k. So we're looking at this value in front of our group of parentheses there. Okay, before we get into notes and actually figuring out some of these properties, I want to go to decimals for a second and kind of show you some of the things that that A value does. So right now I have my A value here, if you look at my slider on the left hand side here, is set equal to 1. That's when I match up perfectly with my original graph. There's a red line underneath this blue line here. But as I take this A value and I move it, if I start to move it up to, let's say, a positive 2, now I see that my blue graph is inside of my red graph. What we start to describe that as is we say that it's skinnier. And the more I move A to a bigger positive number, the skinnier and skinnier it gets. So when we get an A value that's bigger than 1, we say that it's skinnier than the original graph. Okay? As I move back towards 0, um, from one when I get into those decimals, we start to see that I get these wider graphs. That's what you're seeing on the screen there now. Um, you have these wide graphs that start to kind of open up even more and more. Um, when I get to zero, I just get a straight line because that doesn't really make any sense. Okay, But as I get less than one but kind of bigger than zero, I get these wider graphs. So when we say that our A value is bigger than one, we got the skinny ones. That's what you're seeing here. And then when we have the less than ones but bigger than zero, we get, we get wider graph. Okay? The other thing that can happen with A is we can get a negative here. And so I'm going to swing this over into my negatives here. And you see that when I get to a negative 1, one here, I have the exact same graph. It's the exact same shape. But now I'm reflected down. So now this is symmetric down underneath my x-axis. And I have kind of a downward-facing parabola. So whenever I have a parabola that opens down, I know that my A value is negative. Now the same thing is true as far as the rest of the graph. If it's, I get bigger into the negatives, I go more than negative one, I get a skinnier graph. As I get down here, if I can find it here, a little less than one, okay, closer to zero between the one and the zero, I get these wider graphs. Okay, and so we get kind of this whole range of parabolas here as far as how wide they are, how skinny they are, whether they open up or open down. And all of that is based on our A value. So I can even take and set this in motion here. And you can see it kind of scroll through all these. So it gets skinnier, that starts to get wider, flips back up to the top, makes it a little skinnier, then goes wider again and back to the bottom. Okay, so that A value is just affecting kind of the overall shape of our parabola, whether it's opening up and opening down. So at this point, I'm going to jump back over to our notes here. Um, so now that you can see this here, make sure you have this filled in that our a value is what we're looking at today, and that's from the equation y is equal to a times x minus h squared plus k. And this is what we called our vertex form. So if you don't remember that term, we're calling this vertex form. And so first of all, we know that a opens up if a is a positive number. So we say that a is greater than 0, or if you want to put a quick little note there that that means it's positive. And if I want to draw a graph of that, I'm just going to kind of draw a generic graph. I don't have any scales here, so I just know this is going to be a nice U shape. Try and make it symmetrical on both sides. And I know that's open up. My vertex is that bottom point. When it opens up, that vertex becomes a minimum okay, because it's the smallest part of our graph. So when it opens up and that A value is greater than 0, I get a minimum at that vertex. Same thing is true for going down. I just have values that are less than 0 which means I'm starting to have those negative values. Those negative values means I'm starting here and going down. Again, trying to make this as symmetrical as possible. I have the other side going down as well. And now this point here in the middle, my vertex, is now a maximum because my graph is now going down. That is the largest value that I now have on my graph. So opening up, opening down, based on the sign that is on A, if it's positive, I open up. Negative makes me go down. The width of the parabola is the other thing that A affects. So the skinnier versions of A parabola is when A is greater than 1. Or it's wider when that A value is less than 1, but I still need it to be greater than 0. So if I use that notation that we talked about a little bit before, if I'm less than 1 and greater than 0, I say it's between 0 and 1. Okay? And this is where we're talking about ignoring the negative. If this is a negative 
but I set negative two, it's still gonna be skinnier, it's just not gonna be facing down. So we're ignoring signs here, ignoring your positive and negative, if you wanna bring that note over to these. Okay, we're ignoring our signs, just looking at the positive versus the negative. Okay, uh, let's start to get into some examples here. So here I'm just talking about the A value, just kind of determining the direction, whether it's wider or skinnier. So my A value in number one here is the number in front of my parentheses, so here it's the negative three. That negative three is negative, which tells me the direction is going to go down. So I'm gonna have that downward facing U shape, that downward parabola. Okay, then as far as wider or skinnier, this number, if I ignore the negative, is bigger than one, which means it's going to be a skinnier graph. So I'm just gonna say it's skinnier. Okay, I'm not too concerned with how skinny it is. Um, we're just gonna say skinnier for now. We'll be able to graph these a little bit more accurately in a second here. Uh, direction for the second one here, number two. Um, first of all, this isn't quite vertex form because nine is on the wrong side. I could move it over if I wanted, but I'm not concerned with that. I'm concerned with A. A here is one third. Now one third is positive because it's positive. I do know that this is going to open up. Okay, again, because I have a positive A value, positive A values make them open up. Okay, wider versus skinnier. This is a one third. Now one third is between zero and one. One third, that's the same as 0.3 repeating. So less than one, but bigger than zero. So now I'm looking at this wider group here, and I'm gonna have a wider parabola. So just looking at that A value, that can tell us a lot um, as far as what our graph is gonna actually look like even before we even try and graph it. Okay, let's talk a little bit more about graphing. I know you had to do some of these on your homework last night, but just to give you kind of some steps to work through, whenever we're graphing a parabola, we always want to start by graphing the vertex. We can identify that from our equation, and it just gives us a point to start. From there, if our axis is symmetry as well, that makes sure our graph looks nice and symmetric on both sides. Then I need to plot at least a couple other points. Now, those points can really be a thing. It makes the most sense to use points that are near the vertex. Okay? So near the vertex. And the reason we do that is if I know my parabola is, say, at negative 4, there's no sense of me going all the way into the positive tens or something like that and trying to graph it. Those numbers are going to be way too big. They're not going to fit on my graph. So I want to use points that are close to it in the hopes that they still fit on my graph. The other thing that we can do here, too, is using the axis of symmetry. If I'm thinking about excuse me, that parabola, if I take half of that and kind of split it down the middle, I really only need to find points on one side because I know that every one of these points is gonna go over to the other side and I can actually double the number of points I have if I just focus on one side. So that's something that we'll do as well. Then finally, you just connect it with that nice U-shaped parabola to draw your graph. Okay, so let's go to the back here. Uh, for numbers three and four, which are these two here, I know the whole punch kind of cut them off. Um, looking at number three, I wanna graph the parabola y is equal to two times x plus four squared minus one. The first thing I want to do though is I want to answer these four questions before I even get to the graph. So first of all, the vertex. My vertex is given by h and k, um, and we know that in vertex form, it's minus h squared plus k, which looks like this, that our h coordinate actually has the opposite sign. So the fact that I see a positive four here means that I plugged in a negative and the two negatives canceled. So my h is actually negative. That's my x coordinate in my vertex. My y coordinate is the k value at the end, so that's the negative one. So my vertex is going to be at negative four, negative one. My axis of symmetry goes through that vertex. It is an equation, so we write it as the equation x is equal to negative 4. As far as direction, now I'm concerned with my a value. So my a value here is a positive 2. Because it's positive, I'm going to say that this thing opens up. And finally, as far as wider and skinnier, I have that positive 2. That 2 is bigger than 1, which means I'm going to be a skinnier graph. Now, I need to go ahead and start to graph this actual parabola. So I'm going to start with my vertex. I'm going to go over to negative 4. 1, 2, 3, 4, down to negative 1. And I put my point. Now, I know that this graph should be skinnier than normal, okay? but I don't really know how skinny. So to help me out, I'm going to actually create myself just a quick x, x table here. And I'm going to start with negative 4 kind of in the middle. Okay? With negative 4 in the middle, what I can do is I can go a couple more the other way. So I'm going to go negative 3 and negative 2. And negative 4, I know when I plug in, I get negative 1. But negative 3, I can plug in up here for x. Now, if I were you, I would just grab a calculator and type that whole thing in. So I'm going to quickly bring my calculator into the screen here. Okay, I'm typing in the 2. Let's see, 2. Then I'm taking and multiplying by my x, which I'm going to use the negative 3. 
So I'm going to put in parentheses negative 3 plus the 4. Then I square it, and then I subtract 1. When I hit enter, I get 1. So I know that my y value here is 1. I'm going to do the same thing with negative 2. Do 2 times negative 2 okay, plus 4 squared minus 1. Hit enter, and I get 7. Now, this is where we can use this part to kind of help us. So if I graph these points, negative 3, 1, it's right here. Negative 2, 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. It's going to be right there. All right, if I think about this graph, this graph has an axis of symmetry. I'm going to draw it right here in orange. It goes right down. It's that vertical line that goes right through my vertex. Well, if I have points over here on the right, those points should have pairs over on the left-hand side. So this point that's one away from my line is going to be one away on the other side. This point up here at 7 that's 2 away from my line needs to be 2 points away on the other side. Now I can start to see my parabola here. And I can fill in as best as possible a nice smooth curve that goes through both of those. Okay? But by creating this, I didn't have to fill in the entire table. If you wanted to, you could also put these points on here. Um, so this was at negative 5 and negative 6. And they really reflect the same coordinates. So 1 comes up and then the positive 7. <laughs> is there as well. Okay, let's go ahead and do one more down here on the bottom. Okay, just a slightly trickier equation there uh, dealing with that kind of decimal that's sitting on the front. So we'll start with vertex. First of all, this isn't quite vertex form. I want to add by 3 over to the other side there. Okay, from there I can go ahead and try and get this thing set up. So vertex is going to be first. My vertex, again, I take the h coordinate, but i got to switch the sign. So this one's going to be a positive 2, positive oh. 3. <coughs> then I take my axis of symmetry goes through my positive 2 so I say x is equal to 2 direction is based on my a value which here is negative so this one is going to go down and that a value is a decimal that is less than 1 so that means this is going to be a wider graph than normal and again I can start with my vertex I'm going to go over 2 up to 3 and I put in my point and then from there, again, I'm going to create my XY table. So for my XY table, again, I would start with the one that you already know, which is 2 and 3. Then I'm going to go, it doesn't really matter which way I go. Um, I'll go I'll go to the left here. So I'll do 1, and I'll do 0 as well. So when I go ahead and plug in 1, and if I go ahead and type this in, I'm going to have negative 0.25. Then in parentheses, 1 minus 2 squared plus 3. When I do that, I get 2.75. So go ahead and write that down, 2.75. We'll do the same thing with 0. So we put negative 0.25 times in parentheses 0 minus 2 squared plus 3. When I do that, I get a positive 2. So that should now be enough for me to graph. So I have 1 in, in 2.75. So 2.75 is a little bit hard to graph, but it's not going to be too far here below. And I do know, again, that I have my axis of symmetry here going through the positive 2. So I have my other point that's on the other side. And I actually just kind of graph that out of it. habit. We always know there's that symmetric piece on the other side. All right, then I have 0 and 2. So that one's a nice intersection for me, 0 and 2. Again, that one hops over to the other side here, which gives you this one. Okay, if you wanted to fill in some other points, you could. But we're ready to now go ahead and graph this. And we know that this is going to be just a nice smooth curve going out each way and kind of going down as we go out to the side. So definitely a much wider graph than normal, which is what I expected, and it is going down. So there are your graphs.